if you are a Christian and you are in medical school, dental school, law school, veterinary school, MBA school, graduate school, even if you're in college, this video is for you. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're anything like myself and you know you find yourself in positions where your academics just felt like it had a higher priority over your spiritual life and just over other things, you're not alone because I've been there and I'm working through it. And for my program, I remember one thing they told us, they were like, school has to be your number one priority. I remember hearing that and I was like, mm -mm, no, it wasn't gonna be me. But y'all, little did I know that that would have been me because you just feel all this pressure coming at you and you you felt like you worked so hard to get to where you are. I need to do what I need to do to keep where I am. You know what I mean? And I look back and I'm like, wow, I wasn't really acknowledging God in this season of my life. I wasn't really doing the season of life with him. I would only wait till I had the time to spend time with God, not knowing that I could incorporate him into this season and allow his strength to keep me. How do we still remain devoted Christians, but still do well in school? I've broken them down into three categories. The first one is God, of course, because we have to put him what? We have to put him first. I know that's right. I'm sure you guys have already heard about um, put God first, put God first. Putting him first looks like praying before you study, praying while you study, worshiping while you study, um, inviting him into that space, not doing it on your own. I know I'm so guilty of thinking I'm doing things on my own when really I just didn't incorporate God. I didn't invite God into that space. Putting God first does not mean that you're neglecting your academics, does not mean you're neglecting school. It just means that you cannot do school without him. So you're putting him first because he's the one that's strengthening you through this process. Another thing that has kept me really grounded in my faith and also in my academic is understanding that my success is knowing that my academic success does not determine my worth. Jesus already died on the cross. My worth is already set in stone. He already deemed me worthy. So regardless of my degrees and my accomplishments, it doesn't mean anything when I get to heaven. Of course, we want to use our gifts and our earthly gifts to glorify God. But at the end of the day, it's not the end all be all. And that, honestly, I can sleep better at night just with that fact. So going back to the whole prioritizing God, when you prioritize God, you're, you're acknowledging that he's in control of every step of your path and that he will direct and continue your path. And like I said, that you can't do it alone without him. You're depending on him. I see this period as a pruning season to get closer to God, to draw closer to him as I'm sacrificing a lot of things to be in school and I'm not sacrificing it for the world. I'm sacrificing it for God and I'm using this as another period to get into the quiet place. If I have to separate myself from certain people, from certain things and certain habits, and that's what I'm doing because I'm getting closer to him and I'm doing better in my academics, if that makes sense. And I honestly feel like this category, we've as Christians, we've heard of this so many times, you know, seek God daily, pray, read your Bible, um, meditate on it and all that stuff and that is so true I think it's so important to stick with the basics we don't have to complicate things I'm sure your program your school's already complicated enough let's not complicate our faith here okay so I think keeping God first is really just sticking to the basics of that constant communion with him that constant meditation that constant inviting the Holy Spirit in on every step within every day with you throughout your process and um, allow God to strengthen you and guide you. God brought us to this point of our lives. He's gonna sustain us to this point of our life and we're just gonna remember to continue to seek him daily despite the challenges, despite the difficulties that we may face, despite how much stressed out we may seem because yeah, we are not overcome by this world. My second point is going to revolve around you, me, us, 
us and building your routine. Basically just the, the individual and the routine. I think taking care of yourself is essential when talking of physical, spiritually, mental. You wanna make sure all of those are aligned because when one area is slacking in your life, it's creating an unbalance. What this also looks like is understanding your limit. Understand that yes, the Lord's our strength, but you as a person are limited. So understand your limitations and leave the rest to God. That's a big thing. Another thing is to take your Sabbath. I think it's so, so important to recognize the Sabbath. And honestly, I'm very guilty of missing the Sabbath. I've missed Sabbath so many times and I regret it. I don't think this test I was studying for, I don't think missing Sabbath allowed me to do any better, honestly, maybe a little bit. But so I think despite how much we have to study, I think it's important to schedule a Sabbath. I remember listening to a podcast and they're like, if you have too many things going on to where you can't take a Sabbath, that means you're doing too much. It literally means you're doing too much. And honestly, God is not a God that wants you to do too much. He wants you to do what matters. So I think just really think about that. Think about how you structure your day. Think about how you just organize your time. I'm talking to y'all, but I'm really talking to myself and I'm just recording it <laughs> because there'll be times where I'm like, I don't have time to take a Sabbath. Even if I wanted to, I just feel like the curriculum is just so overwhelming, but it, I think maybe scheduling a half Sabbath a day, maybe like take the first half of the day to just really get in the quiet place, rest, whatever you need to do to feel like you're doing your Sabbath and then the latter half of the day, use that to study. I think essentially it's in the Bible, it's in the commandments, we need to take a Sabbath day. Again, going back to the routine, it's gonna take discipline. You may have to wake up a little bit earlier. You may have to even sacrifice sleep. I know, even on top of sacrificing sleep from studying. If you can study your textbook or your PowerPoints for 13, 15 hours, you can spend 30 minutes in the Word you can spend that 30 minutes in the word. I promise you, I promise you. And that's something that I challenged myself with this past semester. I was like, if I'm gonna be sitting here reading a lecture, a PowerPoint over a man that a man produced, and I can't read the word of God from my father, my heavenly father, and I can't read 30 minutes of his word, something was wrong. So I made sure I did that. And I'll be, I'm not gonna tell you I did it every day. Some days I only had time for like 10, 15 minutes, but for the most part, I made sure I strived. I said, if I'm gonna be waking up to study for an earthly degree, I need to wake up and study for my heavenly degree, if that makes sense. Developing a consistent and spiritual routine can really, is really beneficial in maintaining a relationship with Christ. I really think like, and I'm sure you already know this, like consistency is good for all relationships and especially the one who, who makes our life worth living. And I also think it's important to remember that like the spiritual routine or whatever you're doing, like praying, Bible, communion, worship, it should not feel like a chore. It shouldn't be a burden. It should be something that you look forward to either towards the end of your day or at the start of your day. I know for me, it's hard for me to start my day without getting the word, without praying, without reading, without um, worshiping, without just having that quiet time. Um, even if it's driving, when you're driving to school, when you're walking, um, sometimes like during Simulab, I would take a break and I would just go read my devotion. If I didn't have time that morning, I was rushing. I would go take a break. During lunchtime, oh yes. During lunchtime is a really good time. Like. Like let's say we're being realistic here because we are and you just couldn't wake up at 5 a.m. But you, you know, you have to be at class at 8 a.m. You rushed, did what you have to do, you made it to class. But um, our school, we have a 12 to 1 hour lunch. So during that, if I know I didn't do my devotion in the morning, if I didn't pray in the morning, I would take time and pray during my lunch time. And that was, I really needed that. It really centered me throughout for the rest of the day. So that's something that we could think about as well. But ultimately, just find practices that work for you that you feel like could bring you closer to God along your journey. Things that fit with your schedule, things that fit with your routine, and things that you enjoy doing, but also serves God and strengthens the relationship that you guys have. My third topic is gonna be about others, and this is about community, y'all. We cannot do life on our own, and whether it's academic, spiritual, business, like 
to be a one man island or to be a one, well, however they say it, to be a just an island, there's no joy in that. So if you haven't already, or if you don't, try to surround yourself with a community of people that have equal or greater faith than you. We always need someone that can lift us up and push us back up and just be there as a brother or a sister. A sister, because you're probably a girl watching this. Just to have people around you that have the same faith as you and want the same things as you and you guys have the same spiritual goals. I know that not everyone in their academic program will be around will be surrounded by Christians, but if you can find the Christians among your class, your cohorts or whatever, try to develop a community amongst them. Also look into organizations and clubs. I know for my school we have a Christian Medical Dental Association. There's also schools that have like whatever like if it's a law christian law association and stuff like that look for groups like that and i think that's a really good way to network and also build community of faith within your institution um or also if you're in college and you're watching this a lot of christian there's a lot of christian ministries out there i know there's chi alpha that's the only one i can think if that's global but there's a lot of small ones so just reach out network and see what they have Go on Instagram. I'm pretty sure Instagram is going to be a better director or a better directory than me. <laughs> but yeah, um, if a school community is not an option for you, look into um, like a local church, look into churches, look into online groups um, and try to get plugged into a church community. I know that sometimes um, going to church is hard. <laughs> Especially if you're studying to like 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. on Saturday and I have to wake up and get dressed for church. I know it's hard, but really try to aim and structure your schedule to that will allow you to go to church. Even if you have to just go to a really early service so you can just study for the rest of the day, do that. Or if that's not, at least try to watch a sermon and get plugged in and get a good word and have that time intentionally meant to seek communion and seek community with the father and his people some other things that you can do to supplement that community is bible studies like i said online bible studies i will try to find some that i know of that are live and put them in the description box i really hope i can get that organized i plan to get that organized of course also listening to edifying podcasts making sure that the music you're listening to is edifying also include some good playlists that i have that i do say so my friends have made them not me <laughs> um watching youtube videos that edifies you and grows in your faith and also having a spiritual mentor is also an important factor maybe someone you can go to that is of a higher authority than you but y'all i know i put this as the last one but community is so 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 important you know the word says as, as iron sharpens iron so as another person sharpens another so how can someone sharpen you if there's no one around you that's sharp enough aka with equal or greater faith be an active friend and to the friends that are keeping you grounded in your faith that's super important especially if you don't have a community like physically in your school circle or whatever reach out to the people that you do have um and commune with them and just engage in like edifying conversation and i really think that is something that will keep you grounded it's so important to give yourself grace it's not easy and not a lot of people can do what you're doing so give yourself grace and try to do better every day and i think the biggest thing about christian faith is knowing that we can't do this life alone and that's why we need christ to strengthen us and that's why we need community to back us up yeah graduate school college medical school dental school all of that is can definitely seem like a time of uncertainty and it's something it's a new process and i'm pretty sure it's like if you're in college it's your first time you're in college if you're in graduate school it's the first time you're in graduate school if you're in dental school it's the first time you're in dental school so it's a new it's an it's a different season it's a different journey and ultimately just continue to trust in god's plan for your life as you've already trusted him this far to get where you are trust in him and trust and as you're trusting in him you're putting him first i hope i said something useful and i really hope that you're able to apply it to your life and as i'm striving to be a better christian and a better dental student i encourage you to do the same thing 
if there's something that I said that was useful to you that you could apply in your life, definitely mention that below. I want to talk about it with you. I will see you guys in another video and thank you all so much for watching. Have a blessed and beautiful day.